Thanks for dropping into the cast party. Join the cast and crew as they are hurled from their Hollywood film set into the crazy world of Dungeons and Dragons. And action! Yo, do you ever get the feeling that we, we just, like, missed, like, a big scavenger hunt or something? Uh, I mean, maybe, I guess, if you think about it. I don't know. Scavenger hunts are fun. You ever done one before? No, actually. Oh, man. Last one I did, I was in the city, and we ended up going to a cornfield, and there was, like, a green corn that you had to find. Somebody, like, painted it all green. Kind of weird, but I thought, okay, whatever. So we were going and we took a left turn and then we decided to take another left turn and then we took another left turn and by the end of it, we couldn't find the corn. Some like five-year-old found it. I did find a pickle. I... What? Did you eat it? Oh, no, I'm allergic to pickles. Oh. Um, okay. Sebastian, hey, can you talk to Jet? I think, I think he... Blueberry. It's anniversary month. Cast Party is officially two years old, and we're giving you all access to our exclusive bonus content for free. For those of you who are not part of the cast and crew over at patreon.com slash cast party, you will be getting a sneak peek and extra full length bonus episodes to give you an idea of why people love it so much. Starting November 1st, you will be getting access to behind the scenes throughout the entire month, even for this very episode. Join us and Luis as we sit down for our after show and discuss our thoughts, theories, and more regarding each Cast Party episode releasing in November. To end the celebration, we will be releasing the long-awaited, highly anticipated next installment of Enter the Pungeon a hilarious, pun-filled one-shot that is all the rave in the cast party community. Enter the Pungeon is part of our monthly one-shot series, The After Party, where we do hilarious, silly, or downright weird one-shots for all of you to enjoy. Some canon, most not. If you like dad jokes that make you hate having ears, or listening to a grown man not understand half of the jokes, <coughs> Vince, we'll see you in the Pungeon. Last but not least, we will be reopening our merch store for one month only. We have returning favorites like the Matthias University sweater or Xander's Supreme hoodie, as well as some brand new designs to celebrate the anniversary of Cast Party. Check them out quick before they're locked back in the vault at cast-party.myshopify.com. Now I know that we joke and we have fun here, but Cast Party absolutely means the world to all of us. If you enjoy this sneak peek of our exclusive bonus content, join us over on Patreon. There's hundreds of hours of amazing content just like this. For the price of a single cup of coffee, you can get access to backlogs of one shots and behind the scenes info you won't get anywhere else. We do this because we love it, but the support from you all means we can do more and we can create bigger and better things in this amazing community we have built. Patreon.com slash cast party. We'll see you there. We absolutely love you all and can't thank you enough for the support and for spending the last two whole entire years with us. Enjoy the episode, cast and crew. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the two-year anniversary of Cast oh Party. My God, oh, my shit. Oh, oh, shit. We made it. My name is Colin McManus, and I will be your director for today. I am joined by my lovely cast and crew, Ryan McManus. Hi, Sebastian Vivaldi Greensleeves, an emo at heart musician who once while on tour decided he wanted to try playing a brand new song live for the very first time. It was called, I Would Die for Pink Clouds and Peach Vodka on a Park Bench. The band started playing and Sebastian was ready to share this unheard song, but promptly forgot every single lyric due to stage fright. The entire song was played through with no vocals, but the crowd still seemed to love it. So this became Black Tie Optional's first and only instrumental song. Now, every time he plays it live, he sings the super secret lyrics to himself in his head while he plays the guitar. <laughs> All right. I'm looking forward to hearing that that song released as like Boy, a- Boy, <laughs> Nigel, I'm so glad you asked. Do you want to hear the chorus? Absolutely. Did you write this? I would die for some pink clouds. Just don't forget the peach vodka. 
while we sit on this wooden park bench singing we will we will rock ya <laughs> okay all right i like it i dig it <laughs> anna brisbane Blueberry Sky, elven druid actor saving the world through art, whose first ever foray and activism started in 2013 when she was just 17 and she started putting together a company to counteract deforestation. It was an online adopt a tree program where you could pay a monthly fee to plant a tree and slowly build your own forest month after month. Unfortunately, she was too young and disorganized to keep track of such an ambitious move as a teenager, so sadly, Patreon only lasted a few months. Which reminds me of the other Patreon, which was founded in May of the same year, where Cast Party has a great membership program giving you access to exclusive episode live listen parties on Discord behind the scenes podcasts where we discuss each episode in depth, as well as monthly after party episodes where each of us DM one shots, some canon, most not, and they get real ridiculous real fast. So check it out at patreon.com slash cast party, bitch. <laughs> That's not part of the URL. I'm just calling you a bitch. Oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> oh, good lord. Nigel Deacon. Hello, people of Earth. Xander Gucci Supreme, who doesn't deal with arguing parents all too well. Um, when he was a kid, he witnessed not one, not two, but five of his friend's parents have the argument that led to their divorce. Not only was that in itself traumatizing to him, but it instilled this like insecurity and anxiety that he is the cause of divorce. And frankly, he was just waiting and dreading the day he caused his parents to divorce. Luckily, before that ever happened, as I think we know, he was forcefully divorced from his parents. <laughs> I don't want to laugh at that, but... <laughs> Vince Parino. Hello. Jet the Boulder Chambers, who, if you guys didn't know, he's a bit of a movie star. He became a movie star because he got this really big physique, you know, and he had to like very, have a very strict diet. But when you're on those diets, you got to have somewhat of a cheat day every once in a while. So he has one every morning. What he does, he gets up and he goes. <laughs> every morning? And he gets, <laughs> Wait. <laughs> he goes, he gets up, he wakes up Pebbles, he gets her out of her little princess uh, castle. They go out on the front porch with a nice cup of coffee and an apple cider donut, and he dunks it in his coffee, and he sits on his rocking chair, and he watches the cars drive by. Sounds like an old cop. <laughs> <laughs> and joining us once again, we have Luis Carrasso. Hey, everybody. Uh, I am playing Lobos. Uh, something about Lobos' past. Uh, well, we know that he has just recently returned home, and in that encountered some of his childhood friends, uh, his best friend Lada, who he left behind. Uh, and one of the things he remembers about Lada was how Lada would tell him that he was too honest and too trusting. And when he left, that was one of the things that he kind of made it a mission to work on and fix as though that was a trait that needed to be corrected because the world would take advantage of that. Wow. I sense the subtle shade. <laughs> so he used to be like us. All right, everybody, let's talk about what happened last time. You began moving past the woman made of wood as she began following you. This gave warning, and you stopped and tried to speak with the nearby wooden beings. Four in total presented themselves. Xander, when seeing the spores one woman was carrying, decided that was enough and sent a flame strike down upon her. From here, you all began fighting these grotesque wooden monsters, Jet and Sebastian atop pebbles, Blueberry as an octopus, Xander shooting blasts from afar, and Lobos rapidly shooting fire arrows. You were able to quickly dispose of these creatures one after another. Lobos, less than worried about it, you decided to have a funeral pyre for the wood. Jet saw Ermina in the flames, and Xander, in his picture, saw the fire. The wood was made out of body parts, and the flames made out of blood dripping into the air. Continuing on, you found a forgotten village overrun by the plant life here, including bodies and skeletons long past, being kept intact, though decayed, by the forest, as well as a more recently dead body, a body of a council member of Umberdale. With carved words heeding the fate of Umberdale, you explored the nearby temple where Xander found a series of words carved into an altar. 
it seemed like a map, but in riddle form that you all totally didn't completely skip or anything. Approaching a clearing, you discovered a large spherical pumpkin-like cactus with spines the size of lances. They held bodies of all kinds, many of which seemed to be the rest of the council members from Umberdale. A slit down the front of it, Xander pressed through to the entrance, telling you all to stay out. Walking in, Xander discovered two beings conjoined from the waist down, its grotesque mass of flesh and appendages that extended into a large portal that glowed gray. The two beings like statues, unmoving one gripping the neck of the other with its purple hands. As Xander entered, their eyes darted to meet his. Now, the rest of you are outside in the forest, hearing nothing. Rest of the forest around you, completely still. No wind, no critters, nothing. Xander, inside, you simply see all four of these eyes looking at you blink once, completely in sync. And so the scene is set. The question is... You're here! You're finally here! <laughs> Kill him! Kill him now! And aloud, you hear words being projected from the dark black being with these purple forearms, though its mouth does not open. There is no movement other than the eyes of the beings. Kill him! I cannot, I am too weak! He must be destroyed! He's holding us back! No, you don't have all the answers. Again, no mouth movement whatsoever coming from this other being. Even with the noise coming from the gray being's mind, you can hear labored breathing. Please, I have guided you before. Let me guide you one last time. You are done guiding him! Kill him, Xander! Kill him! The portal below. There lies all the answers. If you choose to kill me after, you may try. I am the only one who can stop him. Kill him! Kill him! Xander's just kind of staring at everything that's happening here, and can I approach and just peer into the portal? Do... Do I have to go alone? You don't go at all! Your friends may go, but the decision is yours. Looking at the dark one that has the purple hands... Their features on their face, do they look like manic? Do they look do they look like they're in control of themselves, I guess, even just from the statue that they basically are right now? Give me insight with disadvantage. You're trying to read a statue, a, a moment in time rather than the intricacies of someone speaking and talking. So I'm gonna give you disadvantage. God damn it. The first roll was a 20, a nat 20, and the second roll was a total of five. You see anger. It almost looks like it's gritting its teeth, though you can't actually see the mouth is closed. It's got both of its hands around the neck. You can even see the muscles are being strained, but not moving. Before I choose anything, are you Nomura? And I point to the one being strangled, and are you Blightmore? We're the twins, but I am Blightmore, yes. Okay. I'm gonna think into the Sending Stone. Y'all come in here, but approach carefully, and be prepared to see something you're not gonna like. Blueberry and Sebastian are the ones with the other Sending Stones. Xander just said to come in, but to be careful and prepared to see something we don't like. Does he usually go alone, head first into structures that are as ominous looking as this thing? N no. He sounded okay, though. It fits his personality, but he's never done it before, at least around us. I will slowly approach. 
and and remember just trust me i don't necessarily know what i'm doing but i need you guys to be with me while we do it he says to trust him do you trust him yeah I don't know if I trust his judgment, <laughs> but I trust him. I've never seen him this serious before, about anything really. So, if he's at least taking this situation seriously, it's cause for concern. I'm going to send back in the Sending Stone. We'll act on whatever you decide. Just give us the word. You guys start moving carefully. Walking up, you see these bodies along the side, just five, ten feet from you in some cases, as you're walking forward. There's one thing that I'll do before I before I step in. I'm just going to fire two arrows at the entrance on the ground. And I'll turn to the group if anyone sees me do that. Well, we never know we're going to come into a place, and if we go out through this entrance, I want to make sure that I'm leaving something behind that we can recognize so that we know we're returning to where we entered from. It's a good idea. I'll jump off her back, just start walking forward, and I'll scratch her behind the ear as I'm walking by her. Stay here, girl. We'll be back soon. And you push forward. You guys have to push through. These walls are like a rind of some sort of plant, but it's unnatural. It's not something you've seen before. Continue in, and you see Xander standing here. And Xander, as they start to come in, you hear the footsteps behind you, but in your mind, you just hear, Kill him! Kill him! Kill him! Kill him! No, just kill him now! It's so much easier if you kill him here! I don't take my eyes off of the twins, and I just, I say out loud, you guys aren't hearing that, right? What the fuck is that? Dead silence ever since you called us. You hearing voices or something, man? What are we looking at? Um, so first of all, yeah, yeah, I'm hearing, I'm hearing some voices. It's the first time I've heard anything outside of a dream. Or those videos. Remember how I said things were, were kind of weird there? Um, do, do they sound familiar? I, uh, have you heard these voices before? Or Yeah. Um, what we're looking at here, and I point to the one being strangled. That's Namora. And the one strangling him is Blightmore. And they're called the twins, I guess. These are the ones that you've been talking about? I thought your little friend was Namora. I thought he was too, but guess we never really got confirmation on it, you know? As he's pointing them out, I'd like to take a closer look at them, and I'm going to be using my divine sense. You feel fiend and celestial, and it almost muddles as they are conjoined together. I'm going to walk forward a little bit as I watch the paladin step forward and try to sense something from these statues. Is there anything about these names or these beings that strike me in any way? Is any of this familiar to me or is this all foreign? You would recognize that at some point, long before the Witchfen Forest was here, some people would call the forest Blightmark. What you do recognize, in a way, is the portal they're coming out of. This is an extra planar portal. You know these. You have seen these. You have been through portals like this. I'm going to point that out. You see that? Mm-hmm. That's a doorway to somewhere else. Do you know where? I've been through portals like this, but they all lead you, sometimes, to unexpected places. I... I don't like what I'm about to say, but... I think I was wrong, and I let my disguised self release so that my hands just become purple again. I think that I made some bad choices here, and we need to help figure this out 
the answers, according to Namora here, are through that portal. I let that dagger do more than I should have. I let it, I guess, control me more than it should have. I knew there was something up with that dagger. I knew it, man. Sebastian has been focusing mainly on Xander and his demeanor and everything while we've been in the hut because he's a little too scared to do or say anything. After hearing that he is hearing voices in his head and also wanting to get a sense of what Xander is feeling and thinking, I would like to cast Detect Thoughts on Xander to see if I hear any semblance of a voice that might not be Xander's and also just to read Xander's surface level thoughts. I don't want to go any deeper than that. I just want to know what is most on your mind in this very moment. Xander knows that Sebastian has done this before and he's so when he feels that he knows someone's listening, he's not hesitant to it, I guess. Right now, this is the first time that any of you would have seen him truly frightened. Like he is, he's scared, he's anxious, he feels like he's in something that he doesn't want to be a part of and that's new for him because it's, I don't know, he's always been the one that wants to discover the undiscovered and see the things that have not been recorded. And suddenly he's a, now a part of something that is so, seems so much larger than him and he's he's scared of what he's seeing. Because this feels like he's standing in front of something that feels like a... I guess feels like a god to him. Especially since he's he's starting to piece things together too. Like, these are the things that have given him powers. And he's changed from one person to another in just the month that they've been here. This is supposed to be service level. This is all the stuff that's rushing through the front of his brain. Like, that anxiety is just hitting it with adrenaline. Like, it's just being pumped through so hard he doesn't know what's going on or what answers he's supposed to be looking for but on that surface level you can tell that he believes he should be going into that portal sebastian walks over to the flesh mound almost on the outskirts of the portal and just looks at xander let's go this is what you want let's go no, 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 you kill him! You kill him! Sebastian, you do hear that in Xander's mind. What the fuck? I'm guessing you just heard what I've been hearing in my head for a little bit. Yeah. Which one was that? That was Blightmore. Enter the portal. And that's Namora. Holy shit. All right, now I'm like breaking away from looking at the two of them to like look at everyone and like pulling his feet out feels like stepping out of molasses because he's just been so like rigid. Blightmore wants me to kill Namora and Namora says that our answers are in the portal and we can make the decision after if we want to kill him. It's it or if I want to kill him. I guess I guess this is on me, but still I it's not Namora's the only one that's he's the one that said that I I could bring you guys if 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 I if I wanted to and I I don't know. I I don't I don't I don't know how to do this without you guys right now. Which one of these two entities has been the one calling you forth mostly? Since we got to the Witchfen Forest, I think it's been both of them, but I think Blightmore might be the root of everything that we've seen here. And Blightmore wants you to kill Namor. Yeah. I don't know the significance of this, but this place used to be called Blightmore. I never knew the origin of that name, but maybe it is in that portal. And maybe you can help me find some answers. What type of place was Blightmore before it became this? What, was it something good or evil? I, I just, I don't get a good feeling from that one. I'll, I'll point my arm towards Blightmore. There's something dark about it. And this one just feels so much, I don't know, better to me. And I'll point at Namora. But they're 
conjoined in some way. I don't get it fully, but they, they somehow, it seems like they're intertwined. There's good and there's evil, and it gets me worried about what's to come. Don't listen to him. There's good and evil. Everyone. And who the fuck cares? What matters is you, Xander, and I can give you the power. And you can decide who lives or dies. <laughs> and you can decide. You get to decide what you want to do with life. Just because of what's inside him does not make him good. He's just as bad as everyone else. I, I have dropped concentration on that. I wouldn't have heard that one. That's all you. Um, you know what, everyone? I'm going to make an effort to be just a little bit more forthcoming with my emotions going forward because this is, uh, there's a lot going on here and I don't, um, I don't feel comfortable not sharing it with you. So, the one that's choking, Lightmore, as we know, he's getting a little intense. So, I think we should move forward with this and, and find those answers He's saying everyone's got good and evil in him, but he's kind of saying it like someone that's already kind of evil. I'm not passing judgment just yet, but I would rather we figure this out for ourselves. Okay. If anyone doesn't feel comfortable with doing this, I understand. I mean, I wouldn't describe myself as comfortable right now, but I don't know what other choice we have. I don't think any of us are comfortable, but if this is what you need, we're here. Let's get it, man. This not only gives Lobos answers, but it gives you answers and closure. Figuring out what the hell has been going on ever since we got here. We need to do this and we're here for you every step of the way. Whatever you do, we're right behind you. I appreciate that, guys. Lobos, I know this isn't exactly what you signed up for, but I think... This will be the answer to what's going on with the woods here. If you are still down to, to join us in this. I have to admit, I am incredibly curious, at the very least, about what is going on with you and that portal. It's having an effect on my hometown, but that is a big ask. I, I Initially, I, I was the one to ask you all to come out here with me, and now it seems like the circumstances are... I've switched things up on us, and now it seems I'm the one that's being asked to accompany you. What I don't understand is why the rest of you are so blindly following him. No questions, no hesitation, you're gonna go down there on a, on a, what, a hunch? You, you have an idea of what you think might lie there for you, Xander? And the rest of you are gonna just follow. He's our friend. We have to. There is hesitation, but I I do feel like from what we've heard of what Xander's been going through since we got here, that it's been leading to something like this. But what's in it for you? What deal have you made with Xander to see this through with him, for him? I think we need him. Well, he needs you. We need each other. Lobos, you came home to help your people, right? Yes, I did. Xander's our people. He's the only other one that we have in this fucked up world, and we're just trying to get back to our home. You wouldn't leave behind Lada if you were out in the woods with her, would you? I already left them all behind. But you came back. To see if I could find answers. And what are we doing in this portal? Finding answers. Well, I feel like some of the answers that I thought I was looking for and are answers for questions that I didn't even know I was asking. What I thought I came here for isn't what I think I'm actually here for in the end. I'll follow you. You might need my help. I've been through portals like that before. Chances are you'll get lost. You following makes way less sense than us following. Why? So why are you doing it? Just for answers? Well, because I am curious about, and I point to Xander, him and what he gets from them and i point to the statues you're a very interesting group 
your dynamic, your, your, your trust, your bond. I don't understand it. The closest thing I had to something like that was with the old friends I had that I left behind. I lost that a long time ago. And it makes me a little jealous to see it. And I'm saddened that I, I lost that. I don't get it. I think it's reckless. I think you should look out for him. He's been withholding Xander. And only in a moment of desperation does he start to come clean. And I think that that is really because now he needs you and has no choice. If I were traveling with somebody like that, I'd keep my eyes on him. But there's still something there. Something genuine. For better or worse, you... Xander seem to be called here because something powerful seems to want you to come. Either it's all in your head and it's for nothing, or something is actually calling you here, which is right on the outside of where my home is. And that matters to me. But, make no mistake, if we go into that portal, your friends here, they're making a commitment to take care of you and make sure you come back. I'm not making that promise. I'm going in there to make sure that you don't become something that doesn't deserve to come back. But if you do, I'm not letting you come back. I both understand and appreciate that. I trust Xander's intentions and Xander's heart. Not so sure about your judgment sometimes if you've been withholding from us. I think that was from poor judgment rather than bad faith. I do think we need answers. If we just leave this, I think it's just gonna catch up to you and I think we need to go and I'm, I'm in, I'm in. And I will approach Portal. I'll go over to Xander and put an arm on his shoulder and just ask him, you sure you're ready for this? I don't think I have a choice. So yeah. I'll kind of shake him a little bit eye down at his dagger and ask him again are you sure you're ready for this look at the dagger which I'm sure this whole time has been like wiggling in its sheath yeah the only reason I'm not dropping this right now is just in case I have to use it to kill that guy I'll take my hand off his shoulder and give him a light punch on the chest alright let's get you some answers and I'll go over to the portal I hold out a fist bump for Xander. You ready? I walk up. I fist bump Sebastian. Thank you all. I appreciate you. Let's go. And I'll head into the portal. You feel motionless. The portal engulfs you in a blanket of gray and you're able to find footing on something as the gray blanket over your eyes succumbs. And you can see that you are on the edge of an island. Dull, the ground here faded and lacking vibrant color. Grass gray, the ground here looks more like ash than it does soil. And just outward off this island is a sea of gray in all directions. There are small streams here around the island. They flow up from waterfalls coming off the gray sea in various directions. And they flow towards a central building on this island made of these gray and black stones. It is a large sphere atop a rectangular base. As the streams move by you, you can see humanoid forms in the water. Gray blobs that look like full-on humans or just torsos, some even trying to come up out of the streams and reaching towards you with an arm, and they just keep moving along the stream into the large building. The rest of you following feel the same stillness for a moment, and you see the same. Xander, you are about 300 feet from the base of the building, and it has this wide open doorway. From the opening, you can see a bright white figure, humanoid in nature, floating, long white hair, no clothing on. Their body cut off at the waist, 
as it forms more of an ethereal form below it. It floats as if they've never had legs. Their skull is long and angular. They have these deep-set eyes and serrated ears. Extremely flat nose that looks like nostrils come out from the face rather than under an extremity. And from the distance, you hear, Welcome, Xander. Pleased to have you here. And you see this very long, uncomfortable bow. Would you follow me, please? As the being turns around and floats into the building, it's awkward to watch how straight and flat it moves. Uh, j- just for, for clarity, you guys heard him speak too? Yeah. I heard that one. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. All right. Okay. Just want to make sure. Right now, it's kind of always up in the air if I can only hear it in my head. Start walking forward. It's a large staircase heads upward no door whatsoever on this building you enter and open into a large square room the place is almost entirely barren just stone block walls and some ornate carvings into the side of these walls there are these four large pillars here that hold up the ceiling and then there are these two staircases that circle upwards about four stories and they reach a central point above you. Other than that, there are stone blocks on the ground in the center of this room the size of benches. And you can see this being there. Please take a seat. Uh, Okay. Xander, now that you are moving in and you're a bit closer to this creature, give me a wisdom check. Dude, I fucking love these dice. They're so good. A natural 20 plus 1. Xander, this creature feels familiar. They look like something you've seen before, deep in your subconscious, long ago. Your brain doesn't even remember every moment of this. But this being looks oddly like a creature that abducted you back at the Grand Canyon. Oh, shit. Interesting. Again, in the spirit of being more open with you guys because withholding information has not been a good idea at this point. I recognize this homie. He may have been one of the ones that abducted me back in uh, the Grand Canyon. I told you guys about that, right? Wait, that was real? Whoa, 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 whoa. In in our world, hey. Back home? You saw this. You gotta be shitting me, right? No, that's not real. That's that's not, no, that would mean that aliens are real. (laughs) It's not true, man. That would mean aliens are... (laughs) from here wait wait maybe maybe we should return to this we'll cir- we can circle back and do some theory crafting around the campfire later right right guys are we in space Sander? i assure you this is the first time we have met though there are many like me this being looks down they are incorporeal they look almost like these spirits that were flowing the humanoid forms flowing in the water but this one looks like it has risen out of the water just just to clarify with y'all it wasn't this guy in particular it was someone that looks just like him maybe like his friend okay still that doesn't make it any less crazy to me i mean yeah but it's still maybe this place is like some sort of construct of my own conscious conscience or something Okay. Like it's it's built from from my memories and my experiences and it's all the things that I would recognize rather than just like or your waking dreams. Yeah. I had a dream about this place last night. I was standing out in the water out in the ocean that's surrounding this island. I didn't see this place. I just saw the island. I saw the water. I saw the grayness and then I saw the pumpkin thing. Which is why I was ready to just... Why I just ran in there earlier. Is there anything else from your dream that you remember, that you saw, that isn't here right now that we might be expecting? Or that we might run into? No. No, no we're, we, we good. Okay. All right, let's go. I'm not sure how much longer I have on those flame arrows. Do we have assigned seats? Just sit next to me, please. Xander. I have been given 
contradicting instructions. So I will let you choose which you'd prefer. I have been told by one to give you the explanation of their journey. And this being gestures to the walls with some of the carvings before allowing you to meet with them. The other has tasked me to show you the source of their power. And again, this being gestures, this time to the four pillars that hold the ceiling above, before allowing you to meet with them. They are waiting for you upstairs. They have assured me you are the one to be able to enter. Let me know your preference, and I can show you. And another long, slow, uncomfortable bow. Uh, I get, oh God. I feel like those are both important. Can I get a, can I get a tally of votes here? Uh, who thinks power or who thinks this, the story? I, I think if, if we're talking about power, I'm assuming that's referring to the spooky one. And if we're talking about a nice story, I think that's Namora. If you, if you, I'm assuming, pick power, they're going to try to con you into giving you a power trip and showing you what you could be capable of if you decide to go with Blightmore. And that might be too hard to turn down for you. I, I was thinking that, like, it's, it's the source of the power, and, like, I would learn that Blightmore gets its power from X and Namora gets its power from Y, which is then transferred to me, and then I kind of, like, like, what if Namora, even though it feels like the good one, is getting its power from genocide of, like, gerbils or something, like, and then uh, somehow Blightmore, even though it wants me to kill everything, gets its power from rainbows. Like, I, I, like, what if that's what I'm supposed to learn from that? But I guess if Blightmore's the one tr telling me that, it's, he's going to try and, like, manipulate me that way. Or could be trying to manipulate Well, no, because this homie, this glowing man, he's, he's not going to lie. Can you lie? I don't know what this is. Okay. Is that the truth? All words are truth. Do I believe them? Give me insight and yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go story. Yeah, I think power's a bribe. Jet, Lobos, do you want to weigh in here? I'm I'm with everyone else. I, let's hear a story. I'm not helping you. I want to know what your choice is. That's fair. That's fair. Xander kind of like looks at the floor and um, looks at like each of the pillars and the wall and is just figuring it out because he is fighting that urge in the back of his head to go with how they got their power from that curiosity sense, but also, you know, power is fun to have. I, I think story is the right call here. Let's hear their journey. This being moves over to the wall closest to you on the left side. It looks like these carvings in vague terms describe a story. Two children, born at once, joined from the waist down. Children of a powerful deity, Omis, given an impossible task. Only one son could live and be a part of the Pantheon. Only one would be given the power of Omis and his respect. The being this whole time is slowly walking clockwise around the large square room showing different carvings. Again, the carvings aren't particularly detailed. They're more like outlines rather than scenes. You can see like two children conjoined from the waist down. They're extremely humanoid in shape and form. A father figure looming in the background three long tentacles coming out of his back and curling up and over his shoulders. A tumultuous relationship from the start. Two brothers who lived as one grew together, knowing that once they were finally split, they would have to kill one another. A carving of the father sending his children out of his gaze. The twins were sent away. They would not return together. One would be split from the other, and the victor would return to take their place beside Omis. They traveled 
for years, trying to determine what they could do to become split from one another. They did not have this power. The twins became angry with one another, forever training, hurting themselves with an internal struggle, mental and physical. After years of searching, they returned to Omis. They knew he had the power to split them. They had gotten stronger and wanted to fight for their place at his side. And you can see a carving of Omis throwing them from one world to another. Xander, you can read below and anyone else who can read Abyssal. It says, no son of mine will take the easy way out. They were thrown into the astral sea as a punishment. The twins were to find a way to be split amongst the dead. Torture at the beginning, souls attempted to climb into their body. Their spirits were strong enough to fight them off. They were able to find this island and claim it for their own. They were able to connect this portal to a ley line on Fendrea. They used it to get off the astral plane. When they arrived, they were greeted by Sire, an Archfey Prince. Sire, initially, was to kill them. You can see a carving of a man, fawn-like facial features, and a large rack of antlers atop his head where mushrooms are growing from the antlers. Sire was determined to spread the Feywild influence across Bakaria. He had opened a portal to the Feywild and began growing the trees and plants you recently encountered. The twins were able to make a deal with Sire, a situation where everyone got what they wanted. The twins would spread the Witchfen forest across Bakaria. Once the forest engulfed the entire continent, Sire would split the twins apart. This is their story. So it would have spread. It's going to spread. Oh god, what the fuck, man. I don't even know how we're supposed to stop that. Like, like do we... Fuck it, and Xander stands up. We gotta go talk to him. You may talk with them. Can we... Can we know about their power? Can we know both? Did we have to choose? You see this being's eyes widen. That was not part of the instruction. They gave conflicting instructions. Can you ask for both? Can we hear the power too? Give me a persuasion check with advantage. Oh, shit! <laughs> 18. Xander. Their power. And the being moves over to one of the large pillars in this room. Puts its hand on the pillar. Inside is what powers the twins. One more than the other. Listen closely. Puts its ear up to the pillar. Can I do the same? As you get closer to the pillar, you can hear the sound of running water, but you're also hearing whispers. Much like your dream from last night, Xander. No words being said, but it's vocal. Or at least used to be. The souls of the dead run through these pillars, flowing towards the twins. They take power from them before dumping them back out to sea. This is how the forest grew. What? What's this astral sea? That's where... It's where the, the, the dead are? It's a sea of dead people? Spirits? Ghosts? In a way. Like, like Hercules and Hercules in the underworld? I know not this story. It's like a whirlpool of dead people. So you're saying that this, this pillar feeds the twins? Well, the pillar holds the souls. The souls rise up through the pillar. What world are these souls from? Many. Is the one that's getting more power from it Blightmore? No. Nomura feeds on the souls of the Astral Sea. 
so this pillar is like their umbilical cord almost. Say we were to just cut the cord, what would happen to the both of them? Bunch of ghosts would spill out for one thing. Wouldn't they both die? Or is this one strictly for Namora? There's three other pillars. Is it just this one? Or is it all of them? Say we cut them all. Would that mean that the trees would stop growing? We would get rid of this blight that's on Fendrea? I think we just delay things. The story says that they figured out how to survive here and get stronger from what this was. Not that this is the only thing keeping them alive. This isn't their life support. This is just what's powering them. Do they all feed into both of them? Or do they have their assigned pillars? I'm just curious, Sander, if like you want to keep one of them alive, do you want them to have power? I mean, well, they're not split yet, right? There's still one thing. Lightmore said that Namora would be easier to kill out there if that's what I wanted to do. But right now, I don't even know if keeping one of them alive is, is the right approach. If they're feasting on the souls of the dead, Blightmore wants, wanted, I assume, wanted me to kill people because of the dagger. Namora is feeding on wh those that are already dead. It just doesn't sound like either is a good option. When you are ready, Santer, they are upstairs. They're upstairs? What? They're here in there? So, these two beings made a deal with this Archfey. The deal was for them to facilitate the spreading of this forest. And once that's accomplished, the Archfey would split them so they can then fight it out and see who is the victor. Is that the story? That's what homie said about the story, based on the wall. Why have they been reaching out to you? No offense. You know, this seems like a big thing and you're just a guy who showed up in this world. I have an idea. The dagger that you're wielding, who is that in service to? It showed up one day in an image that said Blightmore. So I've been assuming that it's been attached to Blightmore. And Blightmore is the one who is receiving less of the soul energy that's funneling through these pillars. Right. It's just about power. You're the conduit that's allowing him to catch up to his brother in terms of power. The more you kill with that dagger, the more you're feeding the one called Blightmore. That sounds both plausible and probable. But... Going off of what Blue said, I mean, I don't know why it was, why I was the one chosen. Namora is the one that came out to me first. Namora came before any of this. I just don't know why it was me. I think I should talk to them and see if I can get any more answers. We don't have to take action while we're here, but I think we should prepare for the worst because we need to stop this forest. Like I said before, Figuring out what's going on with me, that would be great. But we came here to do a job, too. We came here to stop that forest. And if figuring out one part of this can lead to that, I need I need to keep that in my sight line. Just, just for the sake of clarity, this isn't... This isn't an attempt to try misdirection or anything. I just... I need you to know that Lobos specifically because you're the one that is understandably the most mistrusting of me. I'm terrified of all of this, and I don't want what's happening to you, your people, to get swept under the rug because of it. I said earlier that I thought the reason I came here revealed a truer reason for me being here, I guess. And this is just confirming it. I want to stop that forest. It's out of control. But that was just the bargain. If we stop that deal, these entities are just going to find another one because they want to be split. These two 
beings that are brothers want to tear each other apart so badly that they will cut whatever deal it takes to do that. That, to me, has become more important than the forest. That's just, that's just a means to an end. Yeah, I want to stop that. But what concerns me more than anything is these beings and their relationship to you. And that you're susceptible. Both sides have a pull on you. I don't think you're ready to have this conversation, Xander. I don't think you know yourself enough to be able to hold your own against them. You're right. But I know that I have my three friends that will be right on the other side of whatever door I have to step through to make sure that we're walking away from this mess intact. What needs to be done gets done. I know you don't trust me, and I have not given you a reason to trust me, but this is a mess that I'm directly involved in, and short of blowing through that door with every ounce of explosive power that we have, I, I don't see another option here. I want to know that what we do is going to stop whatever the fuck is happening out there. Because I don't want to half-ass this, alright? I've half-assed a lot of things. I've caused a lot of problems, even with just us. Because I can't keep my mouth shut. Or I can't perform the way I need to, to save my friends. One of us almost got lost when we had to escape that prison, and I felt... There's nothing I can do about this. I almost got lost there. I'm not letting this be another time like that. I'm not letting one of us, I'm not letting one of your people get lost because I couldn't make a decision that was the best for everyone involved. If it comes down to it and you have to put you, Lobos, or any of you guys, have to put me down because I made the wrong decision here, I don't want any of you to feel bad about it. Because this, this shit's messy. I don't think that's possible. If, if, it, if it came to that for us to not feel bad about it. Surely there's always going to be something else for us to fight. Other than you. Sandra's going to take a deep breath. And stand up. Walk towards wherever the stairs were. Wherever the guy is standing. Just going to look at the stairs. Be prepared in case I don't do this right. And I'll start walking up the stairs. Wait, 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 wait. You mean well. You're in over your head. But your heart, I believe, is in the right place. Don't let them manipulate that. They make deals. The forest is doing what it's doing because of a deal that they made. You might need to choose one or the other or none. Or give them a better deal. You can almost feel the gears grinding in his head as he thinks about that last option that he hadn't even considered. Before you take your first step onto the stairs, you feel a bear hug from behind you. And you feel another one come behind you as well. well we're all going up the stairs, right? Only he can talk to him. And he better fucking come back. He's got to do this. What? Are they going to stop us? No one can get past the barrier other than the twins. They locked themselves in centuries ago. Xander, as we, as we hug you, you s start to feel a little bit of like a warmness inside of you. And you can feel it coming from the both of us. I'm casting protection from good and evil on you. I too am hugging you nice and warm. And you hear a nice little G note in your ear. You get my advanced bardic inspiration. Oh shit. I'm in the hug and I'm casting guidance. Damn, I'm just glowing <laughs> right now. Like, Get a little cute flower crown. <laughs> <sighs> Seeing this uh, uh, image of this bond among these amongst these friends is a sight to see. Uh, Lobos steps forward and trying to find some uh, 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 piece of Xander as his friends are all covering him and <laughs> kind of goes under the arm of one of them and over the arm of another and 
And I'm going to cast uh, Protection from Poison. I'm feeling good. Promise you'll come back. I'm, I'm like wiping away tears. I'm like, this only lasts a minute, so get up there. <laughs> <laughs> Mine lasts an hour. <laughs> Mine lasts 10 minutes. Same. Shut up. All right. <laughs> I like you the most. <laughs> Xander, you take your time going up these stairs. I'm sure your mind is racing. You arrive at the top of the stairs. You can see that there's these two spiral staircases. They comb all the way up, again, about 40 feet, and they have a central circular platform. There's another circle directly in the center of this platform. It's just one step up. This platform is a circle that is half black, half gray. You step onto the platform and you begin to raise into the air. The ceiling above you parts just enough for this platform to raise like an elevator. And you can see a translucent barrier sits above your head, a very familiar purple color blocking off the room above. But as the platform raises, you can feel yourself go right through the barrier. You slowly rise through the floor of this room and you open into a large sphere made from the same stone from down below. Perfectly spherical and huge. You can see four spots on the ground here have this gray water. There's whispers coming from it. The water rises from below and flows towards one of two creatures. And you see them, again joined together. Their humanoid top halves look almost identical to how you saw them in the plant before you entered their portal. Their bodies, however, are much different here. From the waist down, they have long, snake-like bodies. Just from the waist, their flesh continues downward, wrapping around the room until it enters a large mass at the back of this sphere. This too looks to be filled with appendages, antennae, tentacles, hooves, arms, legs, paws. And you can see a second one of these long snake-like bodies that leads to the other being. One ashen gray, the other a muddled black. Again, you can see only their eyes move to meet you. They look to be frozen in time. They're wrapped up in the only thing of color in this room, a large green plant. It has a central body that sits between the two beings on the ground. It grows and extends and has leaves and vines that wrap themselves around the two beings. The vines are flowering. They have these yellow flowers that have these five distinct petals and five yellow stamen inside them. We have been alone up here for centuries. And soon it will be without you, brother. Xander is here to rid the universe of your dereliction. Welcome, Xander. Can I take a picture of them? <laughs> <laughs> um, you guys look gross. <laughs> he called you gross, brother. <laughs> okay. Well, I wish I could say it's a pleasure to meet you both. You have learned our story. And your power, where you get it from. Can you explain that, Namora, just a little bit? Because it seems like you're getting more power from these souls than, than Blightmore. It is as it seems. I take as much power as I can from the souls of the dead. It allows me to expand the forest on Fendrea. It is slow work, but no more harm comes to those living. But that's the thing, that's the thing. He's, he's using how many thousands, millions of souls. I see it there. I see it there. I see it. The dagger. <laughs> that is it. 
That is where my power comes from. I take the power from Fendrea directly. It requires far fewer people. Far fewer souls. And that's the thing, there's fewer people die. And you get to pick. You get to pick! <laughs> this is indiscriminate. This is taking anyone. If we just kill those on Fendrea, take their power. We can spread the forest so much quicker. And you get to choose! You get to kill the people who you think deserve to die. You get to make that choice! <laughs> Do you want more people who are living to die? I... I think the most glaring thing right now, fellas, is that I don't want that forest to grow. A deal has been made. A fey deal. You cannot just take back the fey deal. The forest must grow. So, you're stuck in a contract with, what is his name, Sire? You decided that I was the best option to keep that going. Why did you, why did you pick me? I was, I was on this planet for like an afternoon before you're like, yep, that guy, he's the one. As I told you long ago, the one who has the sight, you have it. You see things from a different perspective. You want to discover the secrets around you. Yes, you have the sight, but I know you, Xander. You want to go home like the others, but oh, not as much. You learn. You see. You want to find the secrets that are hidden to mere mortals. You are special. I can give you power not only to go home, but discover the key to finding all of the universe's secrets. I, too, have given you power, have I not? Damn, this is giving divorcing parents energy. They're trying to win over the child. For a brief moment, Xander, you feel that good vibe energy inside you. I enhanced the sight you already had. But that's nothing. <laughs> you want the power to discover the unknown, and Namora, he does it slowly, drip by drip. You won't fill up your glass one drop at a time. We do it by the bucketful. Every kill you take, you have the blood of a killer. You saw what the forest had done when you killed Dermina. It was the strongest the forest had ever been. And once the forest spreads, I can give that power to you. Fuck. I knew that it had something to do with what I did. Both of you make me feel nauseous. This, I, I, I want to throw up thinking about both of you because holy shit, you guys are selfish. You're, you're fucking children, both of you. I cannot believe that all of this, you're willing to, to eat the souls of thousands, millions of people, and you're willing to kill Millions of people on Fendrea. Do you not think that that forest is going to just hang out with everyone on there? Why do you think that Fey Wild dude wants it on there? It's gonna, it's gonna continue to destroy Fendrea. That's gonna kill all of the people in there. Are there only a thousand people on Fendrea? No, there's probably a thousand people in Valorith alone. There's so many people that you are just taking the lives from, and you can't see past your own selfishness that you want to just kill your brother. Because you want your dad's power? I know this looks wrong. These souls lived life. I tried this way to stop Blightmore from killing innocents. The forest grew for quite some time with no casualties. Blightmore killed all those in Landabor. Yes! And I took their souls and I expanded the forest. I just wanted to do that again. And with your help, we can finish this fast, Xander. We can stop 
this. The only thing that I would want to stop is the growth of that forest. And if that means killing you both, I think that's going to be the next life that I take. It's going to have to be you guys. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I don't know if it's going to happen today. But we can't let that forest grow. I'm going to give you an option, though. One of you wants to be the one that gets your father's power. Which means that you both want to live and you both want to kill each other. But you're signed into that contract, that unbreakable deal. I'm probably not in a position of power here. But if you break that contract with him, if you give us a way to break that contract with Sire, I'll split you guys up and I'll help one of you kill the other. But if you have no way of breaking that contract, if you have no way of stopping that forest from growing, this is it. Deal's over. I would take you up on that offer if I could. But your power comes from us. And we cannot split ourselves. Kill him. Kill him! And then I will be free from him. And we can kill Sire together! If Sire is dead, the bond will be broken. The forest no longer has to grow. If you kill him, the forest continues growing. As it did long before. No casualties. Just more and more trees. The forest only kills because of him. If he's dead, the forest grows. And I am still in my contract. I would just ask that you try to get the people of Umberdale to finally leave. Let the forest grow to the edges of Bakaria. Sire grew this plant, paralyzing us. Once I get back to Omis, I can give you more power without death. Or I can give it to you now with it. God damn it. I have no idea what to do. Let's jump downstairs. How long has it been? Two, three minutes. Okay, well, my guidance has run out, and I'm looking at Lobos's arrows that are now <laughs> no longer on fire. I can bring those back, and I cast flame arrows again. Oh. We didn't talk about what we would do if it was taking a long time. No, I'm nervous. Is there like a, a trigger or a sign to run up the stairs? Xander can talk to us, right? Should we reach out on the stone? What What are we going to be able to do? Either way, we can't get through. Yeah, he said there was like a barrier that, there, that would block us out. How are we even going to help? I'm just going to be pacing. Oh, I'm going to sit on one of the benches and use my tuning fork. I'm gonna tune Daisy to F sharp and switch my damage to fire. The first thing I think Lobos does is he goes to one of the pillars and puts his ear up against it and listens to, if he hears it, the sound of those souls moving through. Starts to think about some of the people from Umberdale that he knows have lost their lives in some way, shape, or form to the forest and gets lost in thought. I'm just going to go back to where I was sitting before. I just have kind of like my hands clasped together and I have my, my elbows on my knees and I'm, my foot is just kind of tapping very fast and I'm just kind of focusing on a crack on the ground, just waiting. Uh, here's, I'm noticing how anxious his friends are. And it's only been a couple minutes. There's just something about all of this that's not sitting great. I'm gonna make a big move, I think. So I'm going to... I'm gonna cast a spell. I'm gonna use an ability that essentially casts a spell. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna approach then that platform. And if I can jump on it, I'm gonna jump on it. You do. And it slowly starts to rise. And you can see the ceiling parts. Then you just see this purple translucent barrier. 
So I'm going to kind of ready an action of sorts. So I'm going to wait until I get close enough to it. I'm going to press my hands up against it. And if it still feels solid before it smashes me, I'm going to use my ethereal ability. I start to kind of glow and start to wink in and out of existence as I move into the ethereal plane as I move through that. What are you doing? Not responding. Where did he go? Oh my god, did it eat him? Did he just get squished? squished? What do you mean? Uh, like he climbed on top of an elevator and rode it to the top of uh, like a skyscraper and then got squished. Lobos! And Lobos, you see that this continues upward. It feels so wrong. You know the ethereal plane is very wispy. There's a lack of color, but when you're already in an area so devoid of color, it, it's starting to flash in your eyes. It's it's dark, it's light, it's dark, it's gray. It's almost like you can't quite see what's real and what's not until the elevator keeps lifting up. What's that? What's that? It worked, I mean, I'm still here. And Xander, you turn around and you can see Lobos rise through the floor. Oh shit, how'd you get in here? That's not supposed to happen. I take out one of the arrows and I start to ready the bow as I step forward. Your friends are worried about you. You're taking too long. Yeah, I'm, I'm learning a lot up here. Trust me, I'm on the same page as you right now with uh, that in mind. Before you do anything, let me try to make a quick deal. Trust me. And I'm going to try and like subtly wink to Lobos so I'm going to turn around and I'm going to face them I will help whichever one of you kill the other when you drop the barrier and let my friends help too okay Namora if you drop the barrier let my friends up we'll all help you kill Blightmore and make sure it's a guaranteed thing in Blightmore, I'll give you the same deal. There lies the problem. We cannot be killed by mere mortals. We have to kill each other. That is the destiny. You, you are here because we're a part of you. <laughs> I cannot drop the barrier. I have tried before. We do not need your friends. The barrier cannot be dropped by me. Blightmore created the barrier. I would drop it if I could, and he can't drop it until these vines are gone. And even if you break the vines, I do not know if you would do that. So I'm at a disadvantage here. He can take this deal. I cannot, for I cannot break down the barrier. All right, Namora, I trust you about as far as I can throw you, but I trust that you're at least telling the truth. Is Blightmore telling the truth about only you two being able to kill each other? Whether that be truth or be fate, it's the only meaning our lives have to kill one another. Well, fuck me. You see that he has an arrow knocked and that he's aiming it at you and watching everything you do. Yeah, that seems like a smart choice. I can't ask for your opinion, but I can tell you what's gonna happen. He's listening intently. I don't think either of them should stay because no matter what, if they're alive, that forest grows. If we take out Blightmore, then Nomura won't actively kill anyone. The forest grows at a normal pace, but it means that the people of Umberdale should move out as soon as they can because it's not going to stop until it takes over that entire continent. If we kill Namora, then Blightmore will just keep growing that forest in those quick intervals every time 
I take a life. Who knows what happens if I don't take any lives, if I actively avoid fighting, if I don't do anything like that anymore. Maybe that's when I just like lose control of myself entirely because he decides to take the wheel. I just don't think that either of them should still be here. Now I don't know what to do. You can kill them. When he says that, can I notice any sort of minute reaction from the other two? Anything from them, even if it's like an eye twitch? Give me perception with disadvantage. You do have advanced bardic. I'm using advanced bardic. That's a 22. Lightmore's eye was looking at Nomura, twitches a moment and looks at you like he's scared. Yes, I think so, Lobos. You need to make a decision. You got to make it fast. If you kill me, if you kill him, you won't be special. You guys aren't what made me special. And I'm going to throw the jeweled dagger at Blightmore. Give me a ranged attack with advantage. That's also a 22. Roll me damage. Max damage at seven. You throw that dagger. Barely makes a scratch. It scrapes across the chest. And once it does, you start to see the vines fall off and decay. The entire plant decays in an instant. Oh! <laughs> Wrong choice. Everyone roll initiative. <gasps> oh, fuck. Oh, boy. Everyone? Six. Eighteen. Thirteen. Natural one, three. I got a 19. Xander, you see ahead of you, Nomura. It is like a huge snake that is coming out from one portion of this mutilated body in the back. It just comes straight up to a torso and then this ashen black being with these dark purple hands. And all you see is these bright eyes. And you can see in this moment, Nomura breaks free. Nomura and Blightmore both stretching, cracking all that's around them. And Blightmore sends a shatter down its spine that completely reverberates throughout the building. Everyone below can feel it as the floor underneath you gives way. Oh, ah. crap. Anyone who is in the center circle which would be Sebastian and Jet, who are sitting on those stone benches. You fall 20 feet immediately, and you are in the Astral Sea. <gasps> oh, shit. What? Oh, shit. Blueberry, you see from the walls, these cracks come all the way down and around. And from the walls, you see... Much like Xander has conjured so many times, giant slods massive aberrations, these disgusting frog-like creatures. So how we're going to do this is we're going to go through initiative, but we're going to go one round upstairs, one round downstairs, rather than jumping back and forth. And we have to start upstairs. That's the lair action, baby. You see that this being is both of them are just reverberating all of this dark energy. Both of them. just It's just coming out of them. And you can see they're starting to get ready. And from underneath, every, every inch of the ground here, you see these... These black tentacles come up from the ground. And they just start slapping all over the place. Um, Lobos and Xander, I need uh, dexterity saving throws. Jeez. Damn. 18. 13 for me. So Lobos, you are going to take 13 bludgeoning damage oh. as these things just as one of them grabs you. No! 
and you are restrained. Xander, you're going to take half of 13. But Lobos, you're first. And I am restrained. I don't like this. I am going to use a bonus action to cast Misty Step. Poof, out of this thing. Appear. How far away can I get from them? Like, how, how, how long is this room? This room is a hundred foot circle. So you could get a good like 60, 80 feet away. But right now you're basically right in the center. Got it. So if I'm in the center, then there may be, then that body is like 50 feet away from me, I guess. We'll say like 40 feet. So I still have my full movement then because I use Misty Step. So I'll Misty Step and I'll zap then towards the kind of fleshy body so that I'm 30 feet. I have 30 feet of movement that I can teleport with Misty Step. So I want to get 30 feet away from that body fleshy body with that misty step and then i'm going to oh, oh, oh man uh <laughs> why am i so nervous <laughs> same don't worry you're not supposed to be here <laughs> i know i should have stayed down there um you know what i'm just gonna let i'm gonna loose an arrow at that um kind of fleshy body i'm going to sharpshooter this 19 to hit that would be 12 piercing and six fire. I got a six on that fire arrow. So 18 total on that attack. Now, Lobos, you are hearing them speak. Oh. <laughs> Don't do that. I meet his glare and I go, oops. And then I turn to fire my second attack on Blightmore. All right, give me another attack. Oh no, that's a miss. Is there anything else you want to do with your turn, Lobos? So I'm 30 feet away from the fleshy body. I'm a little closer than I want to be. I want to move 20 feet back. So I'm 50 feet away. I guess back towards the center. And, and when I get there, I realize that's still too close and I'm going to use my full movement to go further back. So 70 feet away. <laughs> Xander, you are up. This is tough. Who knows if all of my spells are going to even work up here. Xander, he felt really confident for like three seconds and then he threw the dagger and he's like, oh, fuck. So... Nomura, for the time being, going forward, I'm going to trust you on this one. I'm going to try and use Hex on Blightmore. Usually it's accompanied by a fuck you, but right now Xander's too in his head and he's just like middle finger shakily up at him. I feel like in this moment, because of like, because of the room and the scenario, he kind of sees celestial like glow text in front of his hand that in celestial says fuck you <laughs> in cursive yeah it's just <sighs> all right go ahead and make your attacks 23 and 24 both hit 10 plus 4 plus 3 17 damage with the first hit 3 plus 4 plus 2 9 on the second hit you do see that the fuck you is wisping around as your Eldritch Blasts hit. Blightmore brushes away the words. Hex isn't gone, but it looks like he's just nodding it off. Mm, that feels about right. Okay. All right. Is that your turn? Yeah, I'm not even going to move. I'm just going to stand right in the center. At the end of your turn, Blightmore looks at you, middle finger directly back at you, Two Eldritch Blasts at Xander and one at Lobos. Uh-oh. Okay. All right. Xander, 27 to hit. Sure. And 14 to hit. No. Nine force damage. And let me just roll for Lobos really quick. Lobos, it's only a 13 to hit. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Can I react to that Eldritch Blast? Hellish Rebuke, of course. Dex save. 16. You see this, Xander, and you've seen it before when you do it. He's going to use Dark One's own blessing. You bitch. You bitch. To add a D10 to that roll. And that is now a 21. You do still take half, half of six D10. 43, half of that is 21 fire damage. Plus two necrotic damage. That is Namora's turn. Let me know if you need... Good vibes. They've learned my terms. Namora is going to start moving towards 
Blightmore. They're going to cast Flame Strike on to Blightmore. So Blightmore has to do a Dexterity saving throw, which they will pass. So half of 32 damage. As a bonus action, you can see they raise their hand and one of these streams of souls that's coming up to Nomura rises like a wave and washes over Blightmore. They again pass and you can see the souls wash over them. And that is Blightmore's turn. Blightmore looks at you, Xander. We could have had something. I thought we had a connection. His hand comes towards you and the fingers look like they just elongate to grab you. I need a wisdom saving throw. 22. He grabbed at your heart, your soul, and wrapped the fingers around and you could see this tether towards him in that dark purple. And you can see that tether breaks. You know, I dated someone in high school that said the same thing and they were toxic as fuck, kind of like you. You really want to do this? <laughs> Is he your friend? Actually, I mean, we just met. Actually, we just... Good. I will take him. Blightmore can only move 15 feet at a time. That does get within the 60-foot range. Damn. I need a constitution saving throw from you, Lobos. Oh, no. Natural 20. Hell yeah. Oh, oh thank God. Yes. Let's go. Oh, I was scared. You see that this being stares daggers as the tentacles that are still flopping around you, you're dodging and weaving, you know where they are. They melt into a pool and they look like they're trying to come up and they feel like they're just entering your body. You're gonna take half of 67 necrotic damage. Holy Whoa. shit. Oh my gosh. Ah! He screams in pain. With that, they use their bonus action and their action. We're going to go downstairs. Sebastian, you have just fallen into this murky, dark water, and all you're seeing are these different souls. Their faces, they're incorporeal. You don't see facial features. You're going to take one psychic damage, and I need a wisdom saving throw. Oh, six. I'm using lucky. 30-20. You can see that one of these beings grabs your shoulders and shoves their head into yours. Oh my God, Jet! For a brief moment, you feel like you're seeing memories that aren't yours, but you push them out. What would you like to do on your turn? You've just fallen into the water. You can see it is a sheer 20 foot wall on either side. They are made of bricks, so you might be able to grab fingers if you're trying to get out. Jet's about 10 feet away from you. Jet! Jet! <laughs> I take a breath as if I'm going to dive and I just start swimming to him. The second I get there, I pull him in close with one hand and I'm casting Dimension Door up to the ledge. So we are back up with Blue. I'm down on a knee. Help Blueberry! We need to figure out what the fuck's going on! God. Oh, what the fuck was that, man? Oh. Sebastian and Jet, you appear on the ledge. I have this drawn out already with where things are. This is a large circle. Would you like to be on the northwest, east, or south side of this circle? I probably would have gotten so jumbled that I wouldn't remember where Blueberry was pacing. I'm gonna roll a d4, western side. You look up, you see this large, gray, huge, 10 foot tall, 10 foot wide, bulky frog, and it looks just like a larger version of the slods that Xander has brought up so many times, but this one does not look like it is happy you are here. Quick glance around, you can see a smaller one that is bluish to your east and a smaller one which is greenish to your south. I'm, I'm breathing and coughing and huffing and I, I'm down on a knee. I'm just making sure Jet's with me and I look up, whip Daisy around, I fucked up. And Jed, I'm just gonna give you some inspiration. I am gonna run to the north side of the circle as far as I can, use the last 20 feet of my movement after swimming to get Jet, and just to try to distance myself from the big boy and get a little closer to Blueberry. That's my turn. That is the big daddy's turn. 
Sorry, Jet. Good luck. <laughs> you can see that the others are just crawling out with their claws out. This one has this large great sword that it brings out from behind its back, and it runs up to you, Jet. Looks at you and just goes for a large bite. You're an asshole, Sebastian. At least you're not drowning, right? That's a 28 to hit. Yep. That's going to be six piercing damage and 11 necrotic damage. It bites and then comes back around and swings with its greatsword twice at you, Jet. Oh, no. Oh, oh no. Ooh. Uh, one's definitely going to hit with a 26. The other one is only a 15, which shouldn't hit you, right? That does not hit. Five slashing damage and eight necrotic damage. Stab with the necrotic. I know I do that, but like cut it out. You can see as it does so, this long ethereal tongue, and it just smacks you. I need a strength saving throw, please. Oh my God. Wow. He's good at those. You're good at those. Don't roll bad. You have Bardic. You had to fucking say something. You, you roll so bad to say all the something. time, Vince. This is not I my fault. Throw out your dice. Fucking rolled a natural one. Oh no. I want to use my inspiration. Oh shit. Oh my God, thank you. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? No. No way. Vince, you need to throw out these dice. I don't care who gave them to you. I'm throw them in the burning trash. Burning your dice, <laughs> your house, dice. everything down. There's no way you rolled a one again. This is the second time he's done this, by the way. Uh-huh. <gasps> my fucking Star Wars dice. <laughs> Look. Look. Fucking one again. Fucking Christ. You put those on a shelf and never touch them again. They are display only wow. from this day forth. This is the Slod's version of Mage Hand Shove. And Jet, you get pushed five feet backward and you fall 20 feet back into the Astral Sea. And you're seeing the same thing. These beings just coming and like grabbing at you. You're taking six psychic damage. Oh my God. And I need you to roll a wisdom saving throw for me, please. Natural 20, bitch. Thank fucking God. <laughs> and now it's your turn. Oh, God damn it. Fuck this water. Swim to the closest, like, anything that I can grab onto. Okay, so it will just take 20 feet of my movement to get back up top. With an athletics check. Yeah, I'm going to do my athletics check. 18. You are able to get all the way up. Okay, so I'm within range of him. All right, asshole, you want to go? Let's go. So when I was crawling up, I put my shield on my back, so I'm going to leave it back there and just uh, two-handed. I'm going to try to take, like, the blunt end and come down on his foot. 16 to hit? Misses. Then we go from that one, and we quickly try to swipe over to the other one. 17 to hit. 17 doesn't hit. Are you kidding me? Oh, my God, my life is a disaster. That is my turn. Green and blue's turns. One uses the dash action to get within range of Jet. The other one dashes over to the base of the stairs where Blueberry is. Blueberry, you are up. Ah, hi. Uh, can I peer over the edge of the stairs to, to where I heard Sebastian singing and Jet yelling? Yeah, you can, you can see Jet is now surrounded by two of these large creatures. Sebastian's running towards the north towards the base of the stairs where you're at, but this thing is blocking the base of the stairs. Uh, this is Sebastian, do you have one of your, your poof spells? Get, get uh, past the barrier up here? I could, but I feel like we shouldn't leave Jet. You grab him then. You can carry people, right? Yeah, I think we should take out down here. I, I think we should help up there. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna run up the stairs. How high would I have to go to get within like 30 feet of being past the barrier? You were basically like halfway up. This is only 40 foot tall. Uh huh. So if you use 20 movement, you would be basically where the barrier is. Okay. I'm gonna try to misty step past the barrier. I think I, I has to be into a space that I can see. So I would try to land just past the barrier in whatever area that I can see. If you want to do that, you would have to use 20 movement speed to get underneath the barrier because it's a small circular entrance. Okay. You can actually start to see from where you are like these inky black tentacles that are flopping around. Oh, okay, cool. Guess I'm going into that. I'm going to do that. 
I know I'm not supposed to, but... <sighs> oh, hey, Blue. Uh, hi. Oh, what's happening? Who are we fighting? Who's the bad guy? We don't know. Well, I don't know. Uh, Blightmore. Aim for Blightmore. I am... Um... Action. Going to... Wild shape into something that matches the vibe. An enormous tentacle. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> and that is a huge beast, by the way. Whoa. Ooh. From where you enter, you're within 15 feet of Blightmore. All right, I'll stay here. And I'll just wiggle my tentacle, like waving hello. <laughs> <laughs> Not to get them confused with the other tentacles that we're fighting. Yeah. Yeah, this one's white. That is the top of the order upstairs, which is the lair action. And you can see most of these tentacles hit the ground and then start bubbling. They look like liquid. There's this dark black gas that starts to raise. Everyone upstairs, I need constitution saving throws. Oh my God. Cool, 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 cool. 19. Passes. 17. Fails. Uh, eight. Fails. That is 25 poison damage oh. and half on a save. You have advantage on the saving throw against being poisoned and resistance to poison damage. So you'll take a quarter of 25, Zander. You'll take half of the half. I get an 18 on my concentration check. So flame arrows are still up. I used my inspiration though. Hex is gone. Lobos, it's your turn. I'm barely hanging on. You've got your peppier step potion. There is a soda. Yeah, that's right. All right, I'm going to take my action to cast haste on myself. Mm. And then I'm going to use that entire action to chug that potion. That's 20 HP right there. 20 HP. I'm still barely holding on. I'm going to then use my bonus action to activate my boots. Boots of speed. So take a, a, a stomp on the ground, and then these like just kind of like bright light emanates, emanates from the boots as I activate these boots of speed that allow me to double my walking speed. And I'm gonna get all the way to the other side, completely far side away from everything else. So I think I'm 100 feet away from the fleshy mound. Yes, you're 100 feet away from the fleshy mound, 70, 80 from the other two beings. Great. So that's a total of three targets that we have in here because the tentacles are not targets. All right, that's going to be my turn. At the end of your turn, Blightmore is going to take the legendary action. There's three of you here. It's got three blasts. Blueberry first. That is going to hit 23. Yeah. Nine damage. Xander next. That's only a 12. And then finally at Lobos, 23 to hit you, Lobos. Oh, it hits me. It's only three damage. Whew. It's a natural 20 on my concentration check. Xander. Hey, yo, Nomura, if you got them, send the good vibes to Lobos, please. The dude with the bow. You can do it yourself. Nomura sends those good vibes to you, and your right hand stops being purple, and it changes to this bright orange yellow and you feel like you could send good vibes again. And as a bonus action, I'm going to do that. So I got 10 dice and I can send four at once. So I'm gonna send four healing lights, or as we call them, good vibes to Lobos. 17 health. Okay. Wow. Hey. What? That does not go unnoticed. As an action, I'm gonna just keep throwing some Eldritch Blasts at Blightmore from the other hand too, just to make it really hurt. Sweet, natural 20 for the first one. Canceled out by the 11 for the second one, so. 11's not gonna hit, but you at least got the nat 20. 23 force damage. Definitely looks like it hurt. Good. That is Nomura's turn. Nomura continues moving closer to Blightmore. They can't move very fast, but they're within 10 feet of each other now. It's going to use a bonus action to take another one of these streams and try to like wash it over Blightmore. Blightmore fails this time. Hype. Xander, roll me 2d10 and let me know what that damage is. Uh, I got a nine total. So yeah, you can see those souls grabbing and pulling at Blightmore as they wash over him. 
the action is going to be Flaming Sphere. You can see that Nomura just sends this large ball of flame and it hits Blightmore directly. They fail their saving throw. Nice. And they're going to take 18. While this is happening in uh, into the Sending Stone. Sebastian, if you can, get your ass up here. With Jet, bring Jet. There's a lot of shit happening down here. I don't know if you want us to stay down or come up. Come up. Do not, don't worry about the shit down there. We'll deal with it later. Got it. That is Blightmore's turn. They continue moving towards Nomura, so they are within range. This arm lashes out. I need another wisdom saving throw. 16. You see that connection holds. And then Blightmore reaches their purpley arm and grabs at Nomura. And that is going to hit. And you can see that it ignites in this purple flame. 72 damage to Nomura. Oh, thank Jesus God. No. Oh, Jesus wow. Christ. <laughs> Take this. I know it was always your favorite. Sebastian, you are up. You can see that this slod, there's one like 20 feet to the northeast of you. Just watch Blueberry run up the stairs and disappear. And it lumbers and looks at you. It looks like it's going to start charging you next. And these other two are just swarming around Jet. I look at the slod who turned from the stairs. Oh, shit. Okay, Jet, uh, we're going again. Uh, Hang tight. I run over to Jet. Just as like the slod comes down for another swing, I just tackle him and I dimension Doris however many feet up into the the upper room. We just appear on the floor, God knows where. (laughs) I come up and I'm just like, I'm sorry, I'm just knocking you all around. Uh, I guess I'm just everyone's fucking taxi today. Uh, Lobos! And I toss Lobos my extra pair of guitar strings if he wants to do the little tie on the the string again for, for another bardic inspiration for you, Lobos. This has happened before. I will respond uh, accordingly, and I'll and I'll take them and use them. You look pretty fucked up, my guy. I thought you could use it. I could use everything you got. <laughs> and that's it for me. Jet, you're up. God, Smash, you got to start telling me when you do this shit, man. I tried to warn you. God. I'll point over at Blightmore. Xander, this one? Purple hands. Got it. And I run at him again with two hands swing down at him. 17. 17 hits. Yes. Oh my God. Thank you. As I hit him, the end of my hammer starts to irradiate light again and it explodes out and I'm casting Divine Smite as well. 13. So that is 15 radiant damage. Much like Xander just saw the purple energy burn the skin of Nomura, this divine light looks very much like it is burning the skin of Blightmore. At the same exact spot, I'm going to twist my hammer around and go for the piercing end of it. Come right down at the same exact spot. 13. That misses. All right, Blueberry, you are up. I'm going to... Frank, try to constrict Blightmore. Dirty 20 to hit. That hits. 13 bludgeoning damage, and they are grappled, and until this grapple ends, they are restrained. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. You can feel just from grabbing this being, whatever is beating inside of it is rapid. It feels like it is shaking. It, it is not looking good, but the hatred in its eyes has not stopped. And with that, we have another lair action. God damn. Uh, We're here now. (laughs) Every single person takes eight cold damage. Oh. Oh. 19 on my concentration check. Lobos, you're up. So I have advantage, yes, on my attack. Restrained, yeah. I'm going to move within 30 feet and I'm gonna use a bonus action to activate Planar Warrior. So you just see these kind of like images of Lobos kind of like fading in and out into the ethereal plane and then this solidifies again, but his bow remains sort of ethereal as does the fire arrow that he draws and looses 
onto Blightmore. That's a 30 to hit. Very much hits. All of my damage becomes force damage. Ooh. Wow. So Solid. he takes 28 points of damage. And with that, and the slap from Blueberry that I forgot to mention, Xander, I need you to take 13 psychic damage. Yeah, I had a feeling. Now I would like you to take 28 piercing damage. As you feel all of that damage come straight through that tether that Blightmore has on you. Every time you've been hit since that tether has gone off, you've been taking that damage. This last hit, you see that tether shatter. Because Lobos, Blightmore is yours. Oh, shit. Oh, interesting. So this arrow that is fading in and out of existence, it's like popping in and out of this plane. It pierces right into Blightmore's chest and then it disappears. But then out of him, you just see the same kind of ethereal energy from within him start to crack his body and burst from the inside of him out. That snake-like appendage slowly falls downward as the whole body is ripped apart. And as it breaks open, there is this purple orb that stays for just a moment before falling to the ground. Thank thank you, Xander. I turn to Xander. I knock another arrow. What about this one? And I am aiming at Nomura. Xander, over those last couple hits, is in a lot of pain, but looks at, at Lobos and looks at Nomura. We're not done yet. We are. You won't be special anymore. You are not what made me special. I can't trust that my spells are going to work. I can try an Eldritch Blast. Are you sure we're doing this? We can't let them keep doing what they're doing. This won't end well. Nothing ever does when there's people's lives at stake. Snapping my fingers and there's a spark in my hand and I'm prepping a fifth level fireball at it. I lose the arrow. I'll just throw my hammer on my shoulder and start running towards it. I'm turning back into an elf, and I'm right next to Xander, and I'm hitting him with a fourth level Cure Wounds. Xander, you feel that energy rush through you. You hear Jet's battle cry as he starts running. You see Lobos loose that arrow that gets caught up with this ball of fire shooting from Sebastian, and you put those finger guns up. And with all that damage, Nomura falls the same way Blightmore does, as it's harder to breathe, as you're tired. Xander, you now have commoner stats. And then you feel something on your shoulder, and it's Nomura. Oh, hey, bud. Uh, I don't know if you're going to stick around, but I appreciate you being here. Nomura jumps off and flies over, and it lands next to this orb that had fallen. And you see there's an orange one that fell out of Nomura. You can see the purple and the orange, and you can see Nomura grabs it, and it drops it scuttles over to the orange one and grabs the orange one and it recoils a little bit as it drops it and then just looks at you. I'm going to stand up, stretch my shoulders, walk over and are they right next to each other? Like, could I pick them both up if they're, if they're right there or is it like one or the other, like they're too far away from, from hands? They were right next to each other when they died. I'll take one in each hand if I can, just reach down and grab both of them. If I feel something, I'll pull away, but 
your hands feel like they're pulled towards them. And in each hand, the purple one, you feel so much coming into your body. You can see the purple starts grasping up more and more your forearms. The orange, the same on the other side. Give me a constitution saving throw. 17. Sandra, you feel the power from both of these as they continue up into the shoulders and they feel like they're trying to penetrate the rest of your body. You're feeling it from the left. You're feeling it from the right. You're being pulled but pushed. You don't feel like you can hold on to both. I'm going to let go of the purple one. The color comes back to your one side as the power from the other washes over you. And it feels like you just got really good vibes. You are, again, a celestial warlock. Turn around and... I think we did it, guys. And... This is a shot in the dark. I might have Namora's power. But he's gone. So I can just do this again. And I will send healing light to... I'll do one to each. Thank you, guys truthfully could not have done this without you how do you feel you know today was a lot but I'm feeling a lot better and I think the only voice that I can hear right now in my head is from him and I point at little Namora I don't know how I feel about calling you that anymore but um maybe we'll roll with it for a little bit longer your, your hands aren't purple they're not just hiding that, right? Nope. No, that's all natural. I think if I held on to that other one, the Blightmore Orb, the Blightmorb, that might have been a different story, but I think I was holding on to a lot of darkness for a lot of different things, and it felt good to let it out when I was listening to him. And I don't, I don't want to do that anymore I'm sorry for dragging you all into this and I can't thank you enough for helping me through it oh shit the forest I, Lobos I, th I feel like I think it's it shouldn't be growing anymore you notice Lobos was standing still for a moment almost as if almost as if he lagged as the haste dissipates but he was hearing what you were saying and then at that moment he comes back the forest right the forest you think you stopped it? Either that, or we just really pissed off a fake king. I don't know what that is, but it doesn't sound great. You took such a risk. You, you could have chosen one or the other, and you chose none. Lobos approaches Xander, takes a knee, and he says, I have not seen anything like that. In all my days, in all of my travels, someone who stands by his word and does indeed make an, such a sacrifice as he said he would. I am in awe of you all. Hey, man, I appreciate you. Come on, get off the floor. Just give me like a handshake, a hug or something. I don't know. Reaches up and lets you pull him up. We're far from done. I have a lot to, uh, confess. And then he sees the sphere. This is something should be done with this. And as he reaches down to pick it up, he says, uh, I'm so sorry I was sent here not to look after my hometown. I was sent here on a mission by the Magistrate, who I work for. Do you want now? He says that, and I instantly cast Searing Smite on my hammer. I didn't know you. I didn't know who you were. All I know is this world, the politics, the power plays, the struggles. And you have shown me that there is something else here that is even beyond what I thought was possible. I owe you a great debt 
and my time with you is not done. And with that, he reaches down and picks up the purple orb. Give me a constitution saving throw. I just rolled an 81. Xander's in like, st like stunned for a moment. You like hit him with a flashbang right there with that. Can I grab his hand? Can I grab the orb in his hand? I'm, I'm putting every good vibe that I can into this right here. And Lobos, what are you doing? It feels like it's trying to take over. Are you fighting? Are you letting it into you? Are you trying to drop it? Are you... Lobos knew this was potentially some sort of thing that needed to be taken care of and not forgotten about. In the moment, made a careless move and uh, he is regretting it. He wants to drop it. And from the other side of your hand, you're feeling this light from Xander grabbing the other side. And you can see this purple gem just emanating, this purple light that's just overtaking you. It's hard to breathe. And then there's a glow of yellow. And it cracks outward from the center. And Xander used all of those good vibes and it shatters in Lobos' hand. Oh my god. I, uh, I, uh, I, I... <laughs> was just going to say we shouldn't leave this here unattended and... <sighs> My hands are going to Xander's shoulders with some glowing salve and a third level cure wounds. Ooh. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Blue. And I'm going to cast Hold Person on Lobos. Bring up some spectral roots to just hold your person in place. That would be a wisdom save to resist. 17. That is a 16. I'm not trying to fight you. I'm just trying to stop you from doing anything reckless so you can explain. When she does that as well, I'll uh, cast Zone of Truth right on him. I don't resist that. I, I can sense that you weren't doing what you just did with a sense of malice. Am I correct in assuming so? I would not have admitted what I admitted to if I was intending to use that sphere against you. Okay. Good. Now what the fuck, man? Come on, the magistrate? They suck! Are you serious? So much! Uh, do you not have any powerful organizations that suck but also don't give you much of a choice where you're from? Yeah, no, we do. Everyone has a choice. Some of them are really hard. And not always black and white. Is that why you left home? Magistrate business? Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to bore you with all the details, but shortly after leaving home, I met them. I wanted to see the world, I guess. I'm worked with them, worked for them, and not everything that they do and not everyone in that organization is bad. Sometimes they fix things. They help people. Sometimes. I'm sure things are not as black and white where you come from. But I was sent here to investigate this forest. We knew there was some sort of a power here and I, I took advantage of that to go back home, check on my people. And I was surprised to see what I saw there, but more than anything, I'm surprised to see what I see in you. Your willingness to be so <laughs> recklessly honest right away is admirable and also uh, disconcerting. Just so we can kind of get this off of off of our minds. Did you shoot us down? Shoot, our, shoot down our airship? I did not shoot you down. Coming upon you was a total surprise. Not a part of what I was sent here for, but as soon as you admitted to me who you were and I put things together, it was my obligation to stay with you. You probably heard some shit about us. Do you have any intention to turn us in or help them against us? I don't know how to answer that right now. If given the opportunity to hand us in to the Magistrate right now, would you do it? 
If I can get away with letting you get away, I would absolutely do that. But if you're asking me whether my life is worth that exchange, I'm not like you. Hold person dissolves. I can respect that. Can I ask maybe an impossible request? Can you just pretend you never saw us? I can't. But I could mislead them. And I could buy you some time. But we need to get out of here now. Because you, you leave a very noticeable trail. Yeah, that checks out. My obligation was to make sure that you could be found. You need to leave. I will help you in whatever way I can to buy you some time. I need to go back to Umberdale immediately and you cannot return there. That was honestly what I was about to suggest. You head there, we'll head the opposite direction. Let's move now. I know there's more questions that you are dying to ask me, and I have the answers, but we don't have the time. Yeah, all right. Oh, you know what? It's kind of like that Fast and Furious movie where, like, The Rock is like, you got 24 hours, and I'm not going to come after you. And then they bamboozle him, but we're not going to bamboozle you because we don't we don't have to trick you, so we're just going to leave. Ah, sorry, you don't know who The Rock is. It's like this guy, but bigger. Points at Jet. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> start heading downward out of the tower. The first thing you see as you are walking down these stairs is the being that helped you. They're currently floating over the circular hole in the ground. Thank you. You have freed me. Deep bow, and then they slowly descend into the astral sea. Okay... (laughs) Sander, I don't think you were abducted. I think you were, like, haunted. No, he just looked like one of the aliens, dude. He was just, like, it it was... He sounds like there's all the souls from all over the place down there. So, like, that's just a dead alien. So a ghost. Looked more ghostly to me. If I can suggest that you continue your bickering as we move quickly, because we do not have time. Okay, okay, okay. We're going, we're going. Fuck, I hate this. Okay. Back through the portal. On this side, too. Namor and Blightmore are no more. Their bodies still being held by the plant around them. Completely motionless and limp. Guys head out. Out with a large pumpkin. There's a breeze in the air. You hear rustling through the leaves. And Lobos, you, you're very good at this. You don't see... The vine's moving. Doesn't feel alive right now. Takes a deep breath and takes that in, and I go to where I stuck those two arrows. I pick them up, and I say to them, You have still some time. If the people that were following us were here, then these wouldn't be here. I am so sorry. I have to go to head them off so that they don't find you. And I turn to Xander again and I say, thank you. Thank you for proving me wrong. I owe you all a great debt and I don't know if I will ever be able to repay it, but I swear to you, I will spend my days doing what I can. You swear it? (laughs) Pinky promise then. I'm going to hold out my pinky. Pinkies. I hold out my pinky. Interlock. Five ways. (laughs) You need to leave now. Find me again, and if I'm still alive, then I will answer any questions that you still have if if I know those answers. But if you find that I'm not, then know that I died trying to repay you. I'm going to cast one last pass without trace on us all. (sighs) I take off my boots. I don't know what else to do but to give you something that I value that has helped keep me safe. I'm sure one of you will find good use. And I'll put them on the ground. 
You got the Gucci boots? Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Can I extend out one last handshake to Lobos? He starts already backing off. He gives you a nod. And he points in the opposite direction. I'm going to point them to where they can... I know they can get out of the forest. You know that towards the south, Umberdale has had access and talked to villages to the south. And for some reason, the Witchfen Forest was growing that direction. But once it came in contact with Umberdale, it just kept battering at Umberdale. So there are villages to the south on Bakaria that are still around that they might be able to find a way wherever they're going. I'm going to definitely tell them to head towards one of those other villages. And as he starts to back off, as he just gets far enough away from Sebastian, he actually does extend a hand. Can't help himself. I take a selfie of everyone, just like while that's happening, just like... Well, in the picture, as you touch my hand, I say... Just for some extra safety getting back home. And I cast invisibility on you. Whoa. So the picture is just me holding out the hand. <laughs> Depends on when you want to snap it, Xander. If Lobos is invisible or not. It's like one of those pictures you see when lightning strikes where half of Lobos yep. is invisible. Because it starts, it's pans from left to right. So half of Lobos is invisible. Perfect. Before I don't know where you are, I throw my arms over where I think you are and a hug. <laughs> Misses, hits the ground. <laughs> I just jump on, on top of Pebbles and have her stand up and, and start walking in the direction that he uh, pointed us to. After a couple feet, I'll just yell back, Good luck out there. You just hear the wind in the trees. You guys continue south. You get to a clearing. It takes about an hour or so of movement. You're tired. It's starting to get dark, but this clearing opens up and you see pines. Normal trees ahead. And for today, we jump back to Lobos. <laughs> Lobos, you get back to Umberdale hours later and you see there's nobody outside heading in you see Lada eyes wide looks at you and she runs over punches you in the chest you lied to me you weren't on that ship I'm sorry who were they there's people here looking for them the magistrate is here I'll deal with them Lobos let me take it from here the less you know, the better. They asked for you by name. Because they know me. They're in your room. The branded axe. Yeah, Lobos takes a deep breath. And starts to head towards that direction. Turns back to Lada. Try to get as many people out of here as possible. You could not stop the forest. No, the forest is safe. I just don't know if I can stop the Magistrate. One tear comes off of her eyelid, and she starts running towards the castle. With heavy steps, Lobos moves forward, and with a hard look in his eyes, goes towards where the Magistrate is waiting for him. You go back to the Branded Axe, it is much less merry than it normally is. There are guards around. You see the handkerchief that you're so used to seeing, the red handkerchief with the symbol on it, on all of them. I pull out my own handkerchief and I put it around my neck. Open the door. And you see two men here. One completely bald, sitting back, laid out in a chair. The other sitting at a desk in full plate mail. The chest of the plate mail looks like the ripples of waves. This is Commodore Fulton. And he's sitting at a desk, tapping a letter that has your signature across the opening. Unopened. Lobos, you have made quite a ruckus being home for just a day. 
that was to be expected. A couple people here were missing me very greatly and uh, didn't know what to make of my return. Your mission went well? You discovered the source of the power? I did. I did indeed. We will need a debriefing on that, but first, the group you were working with to save this village. I shot them out of the sky. I trust you knew all along they were against our interests. Well, I knew all along who they might be, and I took it upon myself to do a little observing, a closer look as to what their abilities are and their sensibilities, if you will, some of which I have left in that unopened letter that I left for someone such as yourself to read. Where are they now? They are gone. I have a very strong idea as to where they went. It seems that they're working for an Archfey named Sire. We should go to the Feywild. That's where we can expect to meet them again. And you are very good at finding these portals. Did they find one to get there? They did. The forest itself was originating from the Feywild. Zyre was the source of it. The bald man sitting back. Oh, moves forward. Puts his hands on his knees. He's lying. They're headed south. She can smell them. In the corner of the room, from invisibility, a giant dog that looks like a demon. We will have to talk about your indiscretions, Lobos. After your debriefing, I trust you understand you will be put in restraints? I don't see the reason. I spoke what I understood. Zyre was responsible for the forest. The forest came from the Feywild. They have a connection to that Archfey. No chains. I trust I can open this letter. It was meant for you. I had hoped that you had already opened it. I trust I will be getting another with any other information you have on them. I will do my duty. Let's get going. I will follow them. You follow outside. You can see the dog goes back invisible as you leave the branded axe. Commodore Fulton points to the building where your father is staying. You may speak with him. We leave at dawn, you and I, and he starts heading off to the docks where you can see a large magistrate ship. The bald man starts heading west out of Umberdale. Based on what I see, are any of them heading south? You watch. He heads west, out of the city, looks down, immediately turns south, and starts walking. And for today, that's a wrap. Yeesh. Lord. Jeez. Holy oh, shit. Thank you all so, so much for listening. Thank you, Louise, for being here. This was intense. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, I was oh, yeah. fully prepared for Lobos' life to end at your hands. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Louise, tell the people, what, what do you do? Where can they find you? Oh my gosh. Um, I, you can find me on Twitter, on Instagram, Luis Carrazzo. Uh, uh, you put my first and last name together, you'll find me. And I'm an actor. I got a couple films and film festivals this month. And on Tuesday nights, I am streaming with the Pixel Circus. We're doing our Outbreak Undead stream Tuesday nights, 6 p.m. Pacific time on the Pixel Circus Twitch channel. I, I, I love that game. I love that group. It's really, I'm actually really proud of the last like two episodes. Uh, if you if you all get a chance to see it, I would, I would I would be very happy. And all of that will be in the description. They can find you there. And just thank you again. This was so much fun. You are a treat, my friend. Yes. I'm so sad to see you go. I know. Me too. Y'all are a gift. If you guys want more, Luis, more talk about Lobos, you can visit us over at the behind the scenes, patreon.com slash cast party. You can get our after show 
and we will see you there and we will see what is going to happen on the next episode of Cast Party in two weeks. Thank you all so much for listening. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. 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 I'm a celestial again, baby. My man, I am stressed right now. <laughs> this feels like I have to, I'm like I'm making a decision in real life. Yup. <laughs> like, <laughs> fuck. I don't don't know what's gonna happen if I decide to attack one of them or the other. Like if what if I'm like, oh you yeah, fuck you both, and then I don't have any powers and then I just die up there. <laughs> you know, like that's that's not good. What would happen if you did lose your powers? What class would you be? I was thinking of just doing a hard left turn into fighter. <laughs> um and, you know, that makes a lot of sense with my one strength. Negative one <laughs> strength, sorry. Make a new deal with a new patron. That makes sense. Ooh, maybe I'll do, I could become, like, I just, like, go to the ocean at the edge of Umberdale, like, Cthulhu, <laughs> hey! <laughs> <laughs> hey there. Do I have a deal for you? I was sent here on a mission by the magistrate. Colin, you bitch. Sorry. <laughs> well, I am finally back into the sea. Here, moving, along with all the others who had died. My memories of before are finally coming back. I remember when the Erics died. The only other twins I had ever known. Eric Five and Saint E. Love, they called themselves. Their parents named them both Eric, cruel as they be. Ebab Flo swore they were a twin, but they could never show me their true brother. They always called their brother the war-torn knight. Sounds a bit dramatic, if you ask me. Huh. Death is so boring. I wish Jesky Fire was here. We always had a blast messing with the new gith at the academy. I remember when Ash first started, and Jeski and I tied his hands to his face so we could call him palm Allah. New York thought they could do the same, but they picked Dubward. Bad call. Dub may have the softest hands to ever grace the academy, but he shot New York away with a simple blaster hidden in his hip. Not his hip pocket, his hip. Lord Asselberg created the design. Just a simple four-hour surgery, and Dub was shooting from the hip at all hours of the night. Most people don't even know that Dubward was Isuik's partner in crime. Everyone thought he got the hip gun for safety. But they were the ones who weren't safe. The first one to catch on was Jeff the Milkman. He was never seen again. Somehow, the milk keeps getting delivered. Lexi has been investigating the milk deliveries for years now. She has questioned the crime duo on many occasions but she can't get anything out of them. She turned to a fortune teller, Forerunner. He believes it is aliens. Preposterous. Aliens don't exist. Frankie did intensive research on them back in the Isles of Il Agua. That is where polyamorous Swirl grew up and gained their powers. We may never know what Dub and Isuik will do next. <laughs>